In A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones, every great lord has a maester, an educated man who serves as a healer, tutor, and advisor. The maesters may seem harmless, but many fans, and some characters in the series, think they're up to something. Something big. So let's have a look. The maesters are an ancient order based in the Citadel in Old Town, which is kind of like a university. As a maester studies, he forges a chain made of many different metals to be worn around his neck with each link representing mastery of a different kind of learning. Silver for healing, copper for history, and so on. The Citadel is governed by a conclave of Archmaesters, the highest ranking maesters, who each bear a mask, ring, and rod made of the metal of their field of expertise. The conclave also elects a Grand Maester, who advises the king in King's Landing. For the last 40 years, this has been Pycelle. When maesters complete their training, they give up their family name and take vows of celibacy and service to the realm. They're then assigned to a castle or keep in Westeros, where they serve whoever rules there. Healing, teaching, advising, and also managing the ravens that carry messages between castles. So what's so suspicious about them? The Lady of Barriton, Barbary Dustin, deeply distrusts the maesters, calling them grey rats. She points out that the maesters actually have a lot of power over the lords they supposedly serve. She says since maesters often read and write the letters for their lords, they could possibly twist the words for their own ends. Maesters are supposed to be politically neutral, but because they abandon their family names, you can't know who they truly are, or where they come from, or whose interests they might serve. She says, we make them privy to all our shames and secrets, a part of every council, and before too long, the ruler has become the ruled. Dustin makes some good points here, right? Maesters are like the Google or Facebook of Westeros. They control the flow of information, and everyone just trusts or hopes that they're not being manipulated. Maesters write the history books, educate young lordlings, count the votes at councils, and whisper into the ears of the most powerful people in Westeros. Could the maesters be manipulating politics for their own purposes? Dustin goes on to claim that the maesters were closely involved in a plot against the Targaryens before Robert's rebellion. So at the start of the series, before Tommen and Joffrey, Robert Baratheon is the king of Westeros. He became king about 20 years earlier when his rebellion overthrew the Targaryens, who had ruled Westeros for the last 300 years. The rebellion began when Eddard Stark's sister Lyanna was abducted by, or maybe ran away with, Prince Rhaegar Targaryen, but Lady Dustin implies that the Starks, along with the Tullys and maybe the Arryns and Baratheons, had been plotting a rebellion long before the war began, and that one of the main people behind this plot was a maester named Wallace, apparently the son of an archmaester of the Citadel and a Hightower girl. House Hightower is one of the biggest supporters of the maesters. So if what Lady Dustin is saying is true, the maesters of the Citadel may have been partly responsible for Robert's rebellion and the downfall of the Targaryens. A lot of this is uncertain, we don't really know the details, but it sure is intriguing, and we hear a similar but bigger claim from another character, Marwyn the Mage. Marwyn is an archmaester of the Citadel, but he's not like other maesters, all stuffy and academic. Marwyn reputedly keeps company with whores and hedge wizards in rat pits and black brothels and sacrifices to queer gods. He spent years in the distant east, searching for lost books, studying with warlocks and shadowbinders, and along the way, teaching Miri Mazdur how to heal. Marwyn's mask is Valyrian steel, meaning he is an expert on magic. At the end of Feast, Sam Tarly meets Marwyn, and Marwyn claims that the maesters are conspiring to build a world without sorcery or prophecy or glass candles or dragons. He implies that the maesters killed all the dragons the last time around, that they didn't trust Maester Aemon because he was a Targaryen, and that the maesters are willing to kill to further their goals. Marwyn then gets on a boat and sails off to find Daenerys, leaving Sam and the reader wondering what the hell's to make of all that. So let's work it out. Marwyn is implying that the maesters of the Citadel have been conspiring for many years against Targaryens and dragons and magic. Which could make sense. As the historians of Westeros, the maesters would be painfully aware of the damage done to the realm by the Targaryens and their dragons, through war and misrule and madness, not to mention that several grand maesters were killed by Targaryen kings. Maybe the maesters figured that the best way they could serve the realm would be to get rid of the Targaryens and their destructive dragons. It's also no secret that the maesters don't trust magic. It's easy to see why. Magic's wild and dangerous, difficult to control and to understand, 
which is a real challenge to the maesters power as scholars and advisors. So it probably would make sense for the maesters to oppose the Targaryens, dragons, and magic. Can we find any evidence that they've been conspiring against these things? We've already talked about Lady Dustin's claim that a maester helped cause Robert's rebellion, which could possibly have been part of a maester conspiracy against the Targaryens. We hear another claim from Marwyn. He suggests that the maesters don't trust Maester Aemon because he's a Targaryen, and that's why Aemon spent his life on the wall instead of becoming an archmaester at the Citadel. However, when Aemon talks about this stuff, it sounds like it was his choice to serve on the wall, and the official World of Ice and Fire app says Aemon went to the wall so he wouldn't be used politically against his brother Egg, the king. So it doesn't really sound like Aemon was exiled from the Citadel for being a Targaryen. Further, we know of at least one Targaryen who did serve as an Archmaester at the Citadel, although that was admittedly a long time ago. So none of this is really evidence of a conspiracy. Let's look at another of Marwan's claims. He implies that the Maesters killed all the dragons the last time around. The last time around was about 170 years ago, at a time during the Targaryen reign of Westeros when they had 21 dragons. Most of those dragons were killed during the Dance of the Dragons, a civil war of succession that divided the Targaryens and their dragons and pitted them against each other. In the three years of the war, twelve dragons were killed in battle, five dragons were killed by a rioting mob of common people, two flew off and one vanished, leaving just one young dragon, called Morning, alive and under Targaryen control. There were also some hatchlings after the war, but none survived long, and apparently Morning died too, because within about twenty years, the last Targaryen dragon was dead. There were still some eggs left over after that, but none of them ever hatched. Well, not until much later. Anyway, so it's not clear what Marwyn means when he claims that the maesters killed the dragons. The dragons clearly died in this huge civil war. Maybe Marwyn means that the maesters killed off these last few dragons somehow. It has been suggested that they might have been poisoned because they were stunted and small. In fact, the dragons have been getting smaller for years. None ever grew as large as the original three that Aegon the Conqueror brought from Valyria. The maesters say that the reason the dragons don't grow so large is because the Targaryens started keeping them in an enclosure in King's Landing called the Dragon Pit. Though Daenerys's dragons still seem to grow fine when they're kept chained up, so maybe that's not true. Either way, it does seem possible that the maesters might have poisoned the last dragon hatchlings or stunted the dragon's growth somehow, but there's no evidence for any of it, and besides, that's hardly killing all the dragons, is it? What killed the dragons was the war, the dance of the dragons, so maybe what Marwyn means is that the maesters caused that war, like how Lady Dustin claims that the maesters helped cause Robert's rebellion. We learn about the origins of the Dance of the Dragons in The Princess and the Queen and Rogue Prince novellas, as well as The World of Ice and Fire, and in these texts, it doesn't look like the Maesters were involved in the start of the war. In fact, both Grand Maester Orwell and Grand Maester Runciter try to prevent the war from starting, and Maester Norrin helps a dragon and its rider flee the war. If you want to get a bit paranoid, you could point out that in-universe, these texts are written by Maesters, who may have covered up their own involvement in the war. It's possible, maybe, but we are told that a septon and a court jester also contributed to these accounts, making a maester cover-up seem less likely. So, there's no clear evidence that the maesters were involved in causing the war, but we do know that the Hightowers were. Queen Alicent Hightower, who had married King Viserys Targaryen, wanted her son Aegon to inherit the throne, even though the king himself wanted Rhaenyra, his daughter by his first wife, to inherit the throne. That's basically the conflict that led to the dance, and the deaths of the dragons, and it was in large part caused by House Hightower, the same house that Lady Dustin says was connected to the maester who helped cause Robert's rebellion, and the same house that's known to closely support the maesters. It doesn't seem likely that the Hightowers were conspiring with the maesters against the Targaryens, because the Hightowers have actually been very loyal to the Targaryens, but it might be that the Maesters manipulated the Hightowers into starting the Dance of the Dragons, in the same way that the Maesters apparently manipulated the Starks to rebel against the Targaryens. So, we still have no hard evidence, but it does seem very possible that the Maesters were behind both the Dance of the Dragons and Robert's Rebellion, the wars that killed the dragons and overthrew the Targaryens. Let's look at the other part of Marwyn's claim. He says the maesters are building a world without sorcery or prophecy or glass candles, a world without magic. This is an interesting thing because apparently, at least until recently, magic has been in decline in Westeros. Daenerys says that magic had died in the West when the doom fell on Valyria. 
The Doom of Valyria was centuries ago, and happened very far away, so the maesters probably weren't involved, though the faceless men might have been. But the point is that now it seems that the maesters believe that magic's no longer a thing. Maester Lewin says that magic does not work. Perhaps magic was once a mighty force in the world, but no longer. This view seems to be shared by most other maesters. At the Citadel, part of a maester's training involves spending a night in a darkened room with a candle made of obsidian, or dragon glass. Lighting a glass candle apparently requires magic, and the whole point of this procedure is to show maesters that magic doesn't work. So what's the sense in the maesters having a conspiracy against magic if the maesters believe there is no magic anymore? Maybe the maesters have realized the same thing that Quaith and Marwan have realized, that glass candles are burning, magic is returning. New dragons have been born, the others have returned, Melisandre's magic grows stronger, and resurrections are happening left, right, and center. Leo Tyrell says old powers waken, shadows stir, an age of wonder and terror will soon be upon us, an age for gods and heroes. That does not sound like something the Maesters would want to happen, so maybe they're trying to stop it. But it's not clear how they would do that. It's not like they're covering up the existence of magic, they openly discuss it in their books, and they still have an official position on their conclave for an Archmaester who's an expert on magic. So while it does make sense that the Maesters might oppose magic, it's not clear how they would do it. So... A big maester conspiracy against Targaryens and dragons and magic is looking possible, but we still have zero solid evidence that one exists. Let's try to find some by having a look at some individual maesters, Pycelle and Cresson. Pycelle is the Grand Maester. He directly advises the King of Westeros, so he's one of, if not the, most powerful maesters. If there is a maester conspiracy, Pycelle would surely be a part of it. And Pycelle has done a lot to undermine the Targaryens. In Book 1, when the small council discusses what to do about Daenerys, Pycelle advocates assassinating her, though most of the rest of the council does too, so that might not mean much. But there's a bigger thing. During Robert's rebellion, Pycelle convinced the Mad King to open his gates to Tywin Lannister's army, which led to the sack of King's Landing, the death of King Aerys, and the end of the line of Targaryen kings. Maybe Pycelle did these things as part of the Maester's conspiracy against the Targaryens. But a couple of times, Pycelle gets really sharply interrogated, by Tyrion, then by Cersei, and in these scenes, Pycelle totally breaks down. He's weeping and whimpering on the floor, and he reveals his true motivation, which turns out not to be a conspiracy against the Targaryens, but a massive man-crush on Tywin Lannister. Pycelle says he's Tywin's man, that he hoped Tywin would become king, that all he did, he did for House Lannister. In the World of Ice and Fire, Pycelle says the gods made and shaped Tywin to rule. He goes on about the man beneath the armor. Clearly, it was loyalty to Lannister, not a conspiracy against the Targaryens, that led Pycelle to bring about the Mad King's downfall. Of course, you could claim that this seemingly doddery old man is actually a master of deception and is hiding his true involvement in a conspiracy. We couldn't rule him out unless we could really see what he was thinking. Fortunately, we get to do exactly that in the case of Cresson. Maester Cresson serves Stannis Baratheon at Dragonstone, and in the prologue of Clash, Cresson tries to kill the Red Witch Melisandre, which looks exactly like the sort of thing that someone would do if they were part of a conspiracy against magic. The chapter is written from Cresson's point of view, so we get to see all the Maester's thoughts that lead to his decision to try to kill Mel, and opposition to magic and superstition is part of Cresson's motivation. A sort of ideological battle goes on between Melisandre's magic and Cresson's denial of it. But that's not the main issue here. Cresson does have his doubts about magic, and there's no mention of any conspiracy. Cresson's main motivation is that he wants to protect Stannis. Cresson loves Stannis, thinks of him as the son he never had, and he feels that Melisandre is leading Stannis astray, by convincing him to kill his brother and to sail to war without having allies. So while magic is part of the issue here, the main reason Cresson tries to kill Mel is not a maester conspiracy against magic, but a fatherly love for Stannis. So, where does this leave us? The maesters could have a lot of influence on the politics of Westeros. They may have good reasons to oppose Targaryens, dragons, and magic. Lady Dustin suggests that a maester was involved in the plot to overthrow the Targaryens, though we don't really know what happened there. 
Mo and the mage claims that the maesters killed off the dragons, which they might have done indirectly by manipulating the high towers to start the dance, or maybe by poisoning the last few dragons, but we really don't have any proof. Grand Maester Pycel and Maester Cresson make moves against Targaryens and magic users, but those acts don't seem related to any conspiracy. So, given the complete lack of evidence, a big conspiracy involving many maesters seems quite unlikely. Marwan's claims are probably exaggerated. In fact, he might have an ulterior motive for scaring off Sam from telling the Citadel about Daenerys. However, it's very easy to believe that at least some Archmaesters of the Citadel strongly distrust Targaryen's dragons and magic and might occasionally pull some strings to oppose these things. So the bottom line is that there's probably some sneaky shit going on, we just don't know how much. The good news is that we'll probably find out more in the next book. Right now, many awesome characters are converging on the Citadel. Sam Tarly has been sent to study and earn the Maester's chain. Jack and Hagar has come in disguise and acquired a key said to unlock every door in the Citadel. Oberon Martell's bastard daughter Sorella has come in disguise as the acolyte Alaras. And some of Euron Greyjoy's Ironborn have started raiding around Old Town. There are a lot of disguises going on, a lot of intrigue, a lot of mystery. It's going to be a lot of fun seeing how all this turns out and what it might reveal about the Maesters. Thanks for watching. Feel free to comment about what you think the Maesters are up to. Thanks also to Ertach Altinos, who kindly helped out with some imagery for the video. He has some really awesome art based on Game of Thrones theories, so you should definitely check out his deviant art. There's a link in the description. Finally, thank you to all the patrons, including Nick Hurley, Derek Wing, ADC400, and Alice Cottrell, who made it possible for Alt Shift X to go full-time this year. Thanks to your support, we're already using better, faster software and hardware, and are aiming to release at least two or three videos per month, hopefully more. So with a new Game of Thrones season coming out in April, 2016 is going to be big. So happy new year, and see you next time.